Fine, you. Good, good. I, I got the, the baby monitor right here. Both kids are sleeping. So we're good so far. We're, we're good. Yeah. Um, I'll turn it down just because they start screaming, but <laughs> just know if I give you that look like it's getting chaotic, just know we got to speed up the process. No problem. We totally get it. So now we know why 345 was this like key strategic time. Yeah. That, yep. Oh, here we are, episode 10 of our podcast, Shut Up and Listen, Small Town Stories with Sarah and Renee. And so today on our virtual couch, so you're our very first virtual guest, we have Fostoria native Micah Hyde, and he just happens to be an NFL standout who is currently playing for the Buffalo Bills. So thank you so much for making time for us today. We really appreciate it. Of course. Thank Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So I know that you have done hundreds of interviews probably in your career, and everybody probably has their own spiel of how they introduce you, but we would love for you to introduce yourself to our audience in your own words. So tell us a little mm -hmm. bit about that. Uh, well, my name is Micah Hyde, uh, born and raised wow. in Fall Story, Ohio. Um, I am still a little kid because I am still playing sports. I am playing football um, in the National Football League. And um, yeah, I'm just a false story and that uh, happens to be on TV. All right. So clearly you're a football player and you say you're just, you're still a kid, but have you always been passionate about football or was there something else you thought you'd end up doing? Uh, you know, growing up, I always thought I was always into sports. You know, I, sports were, were huge in, in Foster growing up. And, um, you know, whether it was high school football, basketball, baseball, um, soccer, you know, I was, I was involved in all of it. So, uh, you know, I think I made a decision um, early on in high school that, you know, football was probably going to be the route I was going to take. And um, not to say I was the most passionate about it. I just felt like it was it – was, uh, not the easiest route, but, you know, baseball is pretty tough and basketball, I'm not 6'5". So, um, chose football and here I am today. Okay, so you've been in the NFL since 2013. Before that, your career, you had your college career at Iowa. I'm sure throughout that time you faced a number of different challenges, but what is one challenge that you'd be willing to share with us today and share what you learned from that? Mm -hmm. One challenge. Yeah, there's been a lot of challenges, um, you know, throughout my career from going, being a young guy in the NFL, that was tough, you know, just trying to learn who you are as a football player. And it's also a business. You got to learn the business side um, on to getting, you know, another contract and, and moving to Buffalo, starting a family, getting married, you know, that was a whole different um, you know, aspect of, of kind of being an NFL player. Um, but I think the hardest thing throughout, I guess, my career of playing football is eliminating the distractions and uh, also a little bit of sacrifice. You know, there's been a lot of times where I have wanted to do some things, um, whether it was hang out with my friends or, you know, go on vacation or do this or do that. But you know, obviously with football, my schedule is pretty limited. And so. You know, you got to sacrifice your time and, and um, you know, go out there and do your job. So you mentioned eliminating distractions. Uh, that intrigues me a little bit because no matter your age or what your career is, there are always these distractions. Yeah. So would you share with us kind of what you do to help eliminate some of those? Um, well, I try to, you know, I, I think as you get older, um, you know, the friends that you have in high school, uh, obviously you don't continue to, to talk to, which, you know, there's, even if you do, there's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, I think from high school on, you know, your circle kind of gets smaller. You know, I, I'm, I'm worried about my family now with, you know, two kids and my wife. Um, so I guess eliminating, eliminating distractions for me is more just keeping my circle small, especially during the season, you know, cause I gotta be able to focus and, um, you know, I watch a lot of film during the season. So a lot of my free time is devoted to my family rather than, you know, on the phone with friends or visiting friends and stuff like that. So, uh, um, yeah, I think that's, that's more of a, of the eliminating distractions portion of it. And it's tough because you have, that's a lot. And I love that before we actually started our podcast, you said you have the baby monitor next to you. So you're 
clearly good at multitasking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it was, it was, you know, I, I think my NFL wives in, in general, um, NFL mothers have a tough time during the season because I'm, I'm, you know, my wife, Amanda, she allows me to focus on football. Um, the, the greatest thing that was ever was meeting her because now I think I got became a better football player because I was able to focus on football. I didn't have to worry about, you know, what was going on at home with the kids, with bills, with anything like that. I was able to just, um, you know, put all my efforts into football. So, so when I met her, my life definitely changed. Um, and during last season, actually the last couple of seasons with COVID and all that, um, you know, we have we have a two year old, we have a nine month year old today. So um, during the season, I'm not I'm not there as much. So during the off season, I try to to be here, um, be present as much as possible because I want I want to be you know my kids' lives. I want to be you know know how to um, I don't know feed my daughter and and stuff like that. Like that's big that's big for me. I'm a big family guy. So our podcast is, um, of course, shut up and listen, small town stories. And of course, the small town stories we tell is that of Fostoria, Ohio. So what is your greatest memory growing up in Fostoria? Or um, one? One? Great, grow, growing up in Fostoria. Uh, well, you can, as a kid, you can ride your bike all the way across town and it'd be no issue. Um, or at least that's how it was when I was younger. Um, it was about 15, 15 minute ride across town. Uh, I think that was the coolest thing, but just the, the people, um, you know, the, the people from Fall Story are, are, are amazing. Um, you know, I, I grew up with a single parent, um, I had a stepdad a couple years in, you know, a couple years in there, but I like to think that I was, a you know, raised by my mother and, and my siblings and myself. And, um, there's a lot of community support. And I said that to this day is that. You know, even with our foundation today, there's a lot of people from Fall Story that are on the board and on the staff that are helping still. Um, but I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the, the community. Um, you know, my friends, parents, uh, my coaches growing up, everybody helped my mom take me to sports and and just be there to, you know, for for mentor. And, you know, as a young as a young boy growing up in Fall Story. So um, that's kind of a long answer. But I would say the the. The best thing about Fall Story is, and growing up in Fall Story is the community. That's a great segue to my next question is, who is someone that I guess you'd like to mention that was one of the most influential people in your life? I, I feel like it'd be, out of disrespect, I feel like naming one person, it just, it, it, it doesn't do it justice. Um, literally, like my friend's parents, like I was always a tag along. I was always at their house. I was always... You know, I'm sure they were probably like, God, this little Micah kid is, his, his mom needs to come get him because he's just always here swimming in our pool, staying the night, eating our food. Um, you know, like, but my friend's parents, coaches um, from, from little league all the way up until through high school. Um, you know, I've, I just felt like my coaches have taught me so much. Um, you know, I'll shout out my, my high school coaches with Tom Grind, um, which Tom is, he's one of those guys that doesn't, I don't think it's enough credit because I've never met one person that, that doesn't like him. Um, He's and so laid back. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. maybe somebody that's listening to this would be like, oh, I can't stand Tom Grant. But uh, no, he just, you know, and, and I had Bruce Lance as a baseball coach and I had um, Rick Renz as a, as a basketball coach. So, you know, just going through high school and having those same guys all four years just taught me a lot. And then on to my, you know, little league coaches with my friend's parents. Um, uh, it probably took me an hour to name all of them. So it's just a uh, huge community effort. So you would say that you're the epitome of that adage, it takes a village. Yeah, 1000%. 1000%. I, I mean, my mom worked, my mom worked her ass off. Um, she was, she was hardly home in those, you know, the summer days wow. where, you know, she'd be working, we'd wake up, have to do our chores. Um, then from there, you know, who knows what we were doing? We were riding our bike all over town, going to, <laughs> going to our practices and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I'm, I, I'm a firm believer in it takes it takes a village because I know I wouldn't be here without you know everybody's support and false story and um, you know it's just truly remarkable what what that city has done for me and that's why I continue to try to get back to it. So you touched on your foundation. Um, 
I guess I'm familiar with how you started your foundation, but can you give us just a quick backstory of how your foundation came to be? Yeah. Um, so like I told you, I played sports, you know, my whole life. So my siblings did too. Um, you know, growing up, we had a lot of uh, extra sporting equipment that we would just stack up in the garage. So I had a, a college class, I had a business class um, at Iowa and the teacher, uh, it was my senior year, my last semester. Um, and I was already drafted and I knew I was going to Green Bay and I was kind of just like, oh, I got to finish to get my degree. Really don't want to be here, but you know, let's just do it. Well, the best thing came out of it because um, in that class, I was able to start the, the nonprofit Imagine for Youth, um, and we, you know, we collected all that equipment that was in my garage as a young kid growing up, and also had a lot of people donate some and, and donate some money. And we went to um, Shields, which is like you know the the sporting store out there, it's like it's like Dick's, um, and bought a whole bunch of new stuff, took it to the Boys and Girls Club, Cedar Rapids, and um, it became a huge event. So you know, I realized like this is this is something that I can do that. You know, give back to kids. It's obviously, I'm always going to be involved in sports, but um, sports can get expensive with, you know, insurance fees and fees for this and that and, you know, equipment and, and stuff. So, you know, decided to kind of take that route and um, throughout the, you know, the last couple of years has definitely flourished. And we just had our softball game in Buffalo. Um, we raised over $200,000 for the foundation. And, um, you know, just to see what it's become today with a lot of the help of the board and, and staff, um, you know, just another another group effort. Well, I just want to personally, on behalf of the community of Fosteria, thank you for everything that your foundation is doing here in town. Um, of course, you know, the Micah Hyde football camp, which we're recording, it's um, May 31st here, my campus this weekend. Um, this will air when the campus happened, but, um, we're just super appreciative that you run that camp every year and it's only done here in Fostoria. Um, but the new initiatives that are happening too, especially the Champions Club at the high school, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, well, we had a, uh, you know, I, with, with Tim Murray over, you know, athletic director at Fostoria High or in uh, Fostoria Middle School and High School. Um, you know, we have been having, you know, lots of conversations just about the, the sports and, and academics. Um, with Fostoria. And so, you know, with the, uh, my board chairman, Tracy um, Troxel, we've, we've had a bunch of discussions. We finally, you know, were able to narrow it down. I, this is about a year ago um, to, a, you know, kind of criteria on how to get kids more involved with the sports, but also um, having good grades. And so, you know, it's the, the it's weird saying the Micah High Champions Club. I call it the Champions Club. Um, and so, you know, we started I mean, just kids involved, you know, more with sports and, you know, just because playing multiple sports for myself, like that's what made me a better player, maybe a better person. Like you meet more people, um, you know, I think athletic wise, um, you know, I kind of took what I did in baseball and basketball and, and, you know, stole it and, you know, translated it into football. So it's helped me out a lot and I want kids to know that and, um, also, the academic side is a, a big thing that we're trying to build within the foundation of teacher grants and all that. So, um, yeah, that's just, you know, what we started and, you know, hopefully kids can continue to build off that. And I think, you know, year one, we've had, uh, you know, from the first quarter through the fourth quarter, like a solid 33 kids that are that are process, they're on that progress to, you know, hopefully by the time they're seniors get a $5,000 scholarship. That's wonderful. That's fantastic. So here's another question. It takes a little thought. So mentally prepare yourself. If Imagine for You had existed in Fostoria when you were a kid, how would it have impacted you and your family, do you think? Mm, oh, well, I think that it would have took a lot of stress off my, off my mom just from, you know, like buying equipment. I um, mean, you know, I'd always bo I'd always bother her about the new gloves, the new basketball shoes, the new this, that, whatever. Um, so that would have took a lot of stress off of her if we were able to get some some equipment donated to us. Um, and I think also with the the Champions Club, um, that would have allowed me because I already did play multiple sports. You know, I wasn't a straight A student, but it would have gave me some. Um, extra motivation through high school to, to get good grades and participate in sports. Um, and then I think that 
you know, with the teacher grants that we do, um, I don't know, maybe somehow the teachers benefited from uh, the, the stuff that we have, what if it was money donated to the, to the classroom so they can get, you know, um, notebooks and that type of stuff so that, you know, my mom didn't have to pay. So there's, there's a whole bunch of different things that, you know, possibly could have happened growing up with the Badger Youth Foundation. So, um, yeah. So for so many kids in the community, you are who they look up to most in the world. You're from their community. You've done such wonderful things. And for any of the kids that might be listening to this podcast, and I'm going to be honest with you, the average demographics <laughs> of the people that listen are well above school age children. It might be their grandmothers, but, but that's a story for another time. <laughs> what would be the message that you would have for those in Fostoria listening to this podcast, whether they be in middle school, high school, or maybe they're retired, who knows? What would be a message you would have for them as a Fostorian native? Um, well, I think that growing up in Fostoria, um, there's, there's a lot of positivity. Um, there's, there's a lot of people in town that are willing to help you. Um, and I feel like, you know, you can either go two routes, uh, the one route where you just don't care. You don't, you don't, you know, you're from a small town. You don't think that you can make it out. And, you know, this is stacked against you. That's stacked against you. Or you can have a, you know, a positive mentality and, and say, I'm going to make it work. Um, and, and I'm going to, I'm going to listen to the people, um, that, are here to coach me, here to teach me. Um, you're gonna take you know, little nuggets from, from each you know adult, and and um, what if it's you know I can think of something as simple as um, like my parents or my friends' parents' uh, relationships. You know I, I know that um, you know now that I'm married and I have kids, like I, I was they taught me something growing up. So you just gotta be aware. You gotta you gotta you know. Kind of have a goal in place and listen to them. I think that you know, growing up in in a false story isn't something that is a bad thing. It's a really good thing. You can feed off a lot of people. You can learn a lot from from people and and not just you know from a teacher um, or a, or a coach, but you can really have real conversations with them and get to know them. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. I think sure. it's a great message for people to know in the community. So what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given that like really stands out that you still apply? Mm. Mm. I remember one basketball camp. I overslept, right? This was <laughs> in elementary fourth grade. I lived about I don't know, three minutes away from the high school and overslept my mom was already at work so I didn't have you know I just I just overslept and I can remember going to the camp late and it was the final day they were handing out awards and for for guys that you know won the one-on-ones or the three-on-three or you know whatever and I showed up late so I didn't I didn't get to compete in any of any of that and I can remember the coach saying you only get one chance to make a first impression and that's always, that's always stuck with me because I, I think that that's also like how I try to, um, to play to this day. You know, I'm going to whatever stadium. Um, so I'm, I'm, we have a away game at, you know, Cleveland Browns. I go into the stadium and I, I really think to myself, like, there's going to be a lot of people here that have never, never seen me play. Um, so go make the most of it. And it's kind of like my little kid, um, you know, take me back to my little kid. And number one, don't be late. Set two alarms. Uh, <laughs> never, but two, um, just go out there, play free, and and make people remember you. Yeah, that's great. That's great advice. And I just think, I think you take that kind of to a whole other level, though, with your foundation, because you know we talk specifically about what your foundation is doing here in Fostoria, but every community you've ever been in, your foundation does something to support the kids in that community. So I think you're conscious of that first impression, but you also really, I think, work to leave a legacy. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And, and, and you know, obviously it's my foundation and, you know, you can pull my name around, but it, this it is a group effort. I have the 
whole board um, that's making a bunch of decisions. Um, you know, the staff that the staffs in each city or each state with, you know, people in Costa Rica, um, we have a staff out in, in, uh, in Iowa, staff up in Detroit, um, the Buffalo, we just have a lot of help with the, those organization and the, the community outreach that, that they have up there. Um, so it's not just myself, my wife it is literally like taking care of two kids, taking care of the house and drowning in questions from the foundation. Um, Tracy Troxel is like literally on the phone. I, I, I said this in an interview before, um, I'm sure he's gonna listen to this, which I mean, he said he deserves like a million dollars a year. Yeah, Tracy, that's not happening, but you know, I appreciate what you do. Um, he's a hard worker and he's he's a great representation for your foundation. He's always, he's always on. Um, so you know, with my, my parents, um, Everybody just does an amazing job, and you know I'm able to all the recognition. I just literally just push it back out to them because they're the ones that are doing everything, and I, I'm just the guy that shows up, and you know I get to be the little kid to hang out with the kid. That's why I love the foundation so much. Yeah. So your foundation, the Micah Hyde Football Camp, is in Foster Ray this weekend. What are you most looking forward to this weekend at camp? The buildup of it, it's just like every event we have, you know, like we have phones blowing up. People are asking me, hey, what can I do? What can, can I come? Can I do this? Can I, you know, what do you want me to do for the camp? All this type of stuff. And I love it. Like everyone's willing to support. I, I get it. Like, I, I love it. Um, but at the end of the day, I'm like, I just can't wait for the camp to start because it's me out there with 500 kids and I'm able to just like, just do me, just play, you know, throw the ball around, laugh, make fun of them. They make fun of me. Like it, that's, that's what, what I like to do. Um, so the build up to it is it can get a little stressful. I know, you know, my wife, if definitely if she hears this, she's going to be, she's going to agree with it. It can, can get stressful, but once the camp actually starts, it's, it's a blessing to be out there with all, you know, all the kids and, um, you know, them learning from me and me learning from them. Yeah, well, I know there's a lot of kids locally that are counting down the hours until camp starts. So. The entire community <laughs> is a buzz because the camp is coming up this weekend. So, yes, they really get into it. So, I know you have never listened to one of our podcasts, but we do this thing at the end where we come up with just four or five by we, she means her. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm pushing her under the bus on this one because she's done it to me before. <laughs> I come up with these rapid fire questions that have no rhyme or reason, but I'm going oh, to. Oh, no, there's a reason. There's always a reason. There's always a reason. There's a reason. But it's just a way for people to learn maybe something new about you, some random facts. It's been a crowd pleaser. So I've got just. Five questions here for you. I'm going to read them off. I'm more nervous, I'm more nervous about this than like a game. <laughs> you just say the first thing that comes to your mind. They're, That's the most nerve wracking part. They're painless. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we'll start right, with what's the up? one. What's your favorite food? Thai or Mexican. Okay. Okay. What's your favorite movie genre? Oh. Comedy. Okay. Wait, I didn't hear his answer. Comedy. Oh, okay. Okay. What's your favorite animal? Cheetah. <laughs> if you could have a superpower, what would it be? Invisible. Ooh. Last question. For so many people here in Fostoria, you are their favorite sports player. Who is your favorite sports player? Oh my gosh, my favorite sports player. Oh, I've had way too many growing up. I can't answer that. I feel like I'm, I'm letting you guys down. <laughs> Can you pick like two or three? Oh, okay. Growing up, D Wade, Dwayne Wade was my guy. LeBron, love him to this day. Um, and just the hustle, the, the mindset of Kobe Bryant. I'll take those two. All basketball players. There you go. See, we brought the hard hitter in at the end. That's what happened there. And, and baby just started crying. That's perfect timing. Okay. Well, good luck, guys. Thank you so much thank for you. participating today. And good luck at the camp this weekend. And know that Sunday afternoons, we're watching you here in Bostoria. That's right.